Okay, the second module of CHE 451 is 1 1.2 application of one dimensional heat transfer by conduction one. Remember, we have looked at application of one dimensional heat transfer using flat walls. Now, here we we'll look at introduction. We're going to look at cylindrical systems and multi layer cylinder. We'll do illustrations and conclude. Now, for conduction in the walls of a hollow cylinder, the heat flow is in the radial direction. Remember the flat, we had a flat wall. So, we are going to look at the area normal to the flow. And of course, the area normal to the flow for a cylinder, the area is 2 pi ROL, where L is the length. And then we will do the same integration. We'll have equation one, Q is equal to minus K bracket 2 pi ROL dt over dr. Now you can see before we had the X, now we're having the R. So when we integrate this equation one, we'll have equation two, where Q is equal to minus 2 pi ROL K into delta T divided by lin RO over ROI. RO is outer diameter and ROI is internal diameter. Remember that there must be a thickness for the cylinder. Then this equation can be written as Q equal to delta T all over lin RO over ROI divided by 2 pi LK. Automatically what that means is that the resistance for a cylinder is given by equation 4. Remember we also gave the resistance for a slab. Now, multi-layer cylinder. When we have multi-layer, just like we had for the slab, in this case now, we have three of them. Q is equal to minus 2 pi rho L delta T divided by 1 over K1 lin R1 R I plus 1 over. So those components there are for all the components of the multi-layer cylinder. And we'll try also to differentiate, the, <coughs> to differentiate them into three. Q1, Q2, Q3. And you see that we have the same equation except that we'll be changing from K1 to K2 to K3. We're also changing from temperatures internal to outer temperature and so on. And if Q1 is equal to Q2 equal to Q3, then we're going to have that equation 9. And if we multiply by ROO minus ROI will have equation 10. Again, we'll do the same treatment. We'll now have a log mean area, just like we calculated for this slab. Now we can employ this by solving for a steel pipe. Now we'll have to take time to look at this. I calculate the rate of heat loss. Then by what factor will be heat reduced? If there is an insulation of magnesia 2 cm thick. Now, if the magnesia insulation thickness is increased to 50 cm, what will be the reduction in the heat loss? Again, instead of increasing to 50 cm, we are putting another insulator 2 cm thick and find out. Look at what we solved. You will actually see that the heat loss is reduced when we put the first one there is the heat loss. The B part will now added an insulate insulation. After that, we increase C, increase, and we'll see the heat loss. Instead of increasing, we now added another one, and you see that the heat loss by adding Another insulation is far better. It's far better. And that means if you look at it, for you to have 50 cm, you know, construction, it will be very, very exorbitant. It's better to have 2 cm coating than 50 cm coating. And that's one of the essence of these calculations. You have to make a calculation before you go for construction. Otherwise, you waste your money assembling materials and then you find out that what you want to do will not work.
and that's a problem. So we've been able to look at application of one-dimensional heat transfer by conduction to multi-layer cylinder. And then we'll look at illustration. Take your time to look at that illustration and you'll understand this multi-layer cylinder more. Thank you very much. Expect to see you in the next class.